This is the Postgraduate Pediatric Orthopedic Video Series. I'm Mason al Nuri, a pediatric orthopedic and pediatric spine surgeon. This is Chapter 18 in the Postgraduate Pediatric Orthopedics book. We're going to be talking about intrathecal baclofen therapy. Chapter 18 in the Postgraduate Pediatric Orthopedics book talks about cerebral palsy in more detail, and there's a separate video about cerebral palsy, uh, which you can watch uh, to gain more understanding about the treatment of cerebral palsy. And the main points that were covered uh, regarding the treatment include physiotherapy, orthosis, assisted devices, serial casting, treatment of spasticity, and surgery. Intrathecal baclofen therapy can be used to treat refractory spasticity in both adults and in children. Patients who have been diagnosed with stroke, brain injury, multiple sclerosis, or those who have suffered from spinal cord injury would benefit from this treatment in addition to patients who have cerebral palsy, which is the main focus of the video. Intrathecal baclofen therapy is best used for lower limb spasticity as the catheter typically reaches the lumbar spinal cord. However, this may also help with upper and lower limb spasticity by adjusting the catheter to be inserted all the way up to around the level of T6 or T7 or even higher. However, brain exposure and side effects may increase in this case. Intrathecal baclofen therapy may not be suitable if spasticity is functionally helpful for the patient, such as for standing, or if the patient cannot manage the long-term care associated with having an intrathecal baclofen pump. Baclofen is infused directly into the intrathecal space via a pump that is implanted in the abdomen. The mechanism of action, baclofen is essentially a structural analog of gamma aminobutyric acid, also known as GABA. It binds to the GABA-B receptors, thus it blocks both the mono and polysynaptic reflexes. Given the hydrophilic properties of the drug, oral baclofen results in little absorption into the cerebrospinal fluid. And usually large oral doses are required, resulting in significant side effects like sedation, as the concentration that reaches the brain is almost the same as the concentration that reaches the spinal cord. Before deciding to proceed with intrathecal baclofen pump implantation, a trial process is generally recommended. A test dose of intrathecal baclofen is typically administered via a lumbar puncture, usually 50 micrograms, and it is only given if pump implantation is deemed to be a viable option for the patient. And the decision can be taken by a multidisciplinary team consisting of neurology, neurosurgery, spine surgery, physiatry, or physiotherapy, among other subspecialties. Response to the test dose is usually measured by the Ashworth scale, where more than a two-point or one-point drop is seen in cerebral palsy cases, but it can also be measured through the spasm frequency scale or simply by observing patient function and vital signs. A positive response confirms suitability for pump implantation. Let us move on to the patient who is featured in this video. He is a 10-year-old boy who is known to have cerebral palsy, GMFCS level 5. Uh, his weight is 17 kgs and he has severe spasticity that is poorly controlled with oral antispasticity medications. This is making it difficult for his parents and caretakers to maintain good positioning, a good level of hygiene, and to engage with physiotherapy and exercises. The patient is initially positioned in a lateral decubitus position. Uh, some surgeons prefer to have the patient in a prone position, but the technique is uh, essentially the same. And as you can see here with my index finger, I'm palpating the iliac crest 
and along the same line with my thumb, I'm palpating the spinous process of what is believed to be L4. And my needle is going in between the spinous process of L4 and the spinous process of L5 in that soft space in between them, just the same way a lumbar puncture is performed. Once you have identified the correct space, make sure your needle is not hitting bone and continue to advance, um, make sure the stylet is inside the needle. And once you feel that the soft tissues have given way, uh, remove the stylet from the needle and check for CSF backflow. The needle you use can be a size uh, 22 gauge or 23 gauge. It generally doesn't have to be very thick because the baclofen medication um, is easy to give through a small gauge needle. In the picture, you can see uh, the landmarks more clearly. You can clearly see the cerebrospinal fluid CSF backflow here. And this means you have successfully entered the intrathecal space and that you are ready to inject your intrathecal baclofen. And you can also uh, see the different preparations for intrathecal baclofen. Some of these preparations are used for refilling the intrathecal baclofen pump. And this uh, may depend, of course, on the size of the pump and it may depend on the dosing. You would need to contact your local supplier in order to know what the best uh, preparation is for the uh, pump refilling. However, when it comes to the intrathecal baclofen test dose, the preparation is usually standard and that would be, as discussed before, 50 mcgs and this comes uh, prepared for you in one ampoule. Some surgeons prefer to give 100 mcgs test dose and in that case you would need two uh, of that ampoule. Now in certain situations you may not have that available. You can use a uh, refilling uh, concentration and simply dilute it into the needed uh, 50 mcg or 100 mcg but this tends to be uh, more wasteful and takes a bit more preparation time so you can see here that we're injecting 50 mcgs of uh, intrathecal baclofen um, and this you have to do it over the span of one minute it has to be injected slowly before injecting you would have to make sure that your csf backflow is uh, visible and as you were able to see it in this video, and you can also pull back with your syringe uh, just for a few kind of uh, milliliters in order to see that CSF is actually flowing into the syringe. And after that, you can proceed with the injection. After you finish injecting all your intrathecal baclofen, be sure to um, flush it with um, just like one cc of normal saline um, in order to make sure that the entire dose is given intrathecally and that nothing remains um, within the syringe or within the needle. Generally speaking, for test dose patients, you want to make sure to remind your anesthetist not to use any paralytic agents to ensure that any effectiveness or reduction in spasticity is entirely a result of the baclofen test dose. You also want to ask your physiotherapist to assess the patient preoperatively, so the morning uh, of the test dose, and for this patient we found that his modified Ashworth score was 3 in his um, upper limbs, mainly the uh, biceps, and his lower limbs, mainly his hip adductors, and his hamstrings, as well as his gastrocs. You also want to assess the patient four hours after the test dose where the baclofen will have its highest uh, efficacy. And for this patient, he was indeed assessed after four hours and he was found to have a significant improvement in the level of spasticity 
where his modified Ashworth score uh, decreased to 1 in all the previously mentioned muscle groups. In that case, we consider that this test dose was successful and the patient had a smooth post-operative recovery and therefore he was booked for intrathecal baclofen pump implantation after discussing the result with the rest of the team and with the parents. And with that, we've reached the end of our video. We hope this is helpful for your clinical practice or exam. Uh, I've also included uh, some more information and nice guidelines uh, in the description below for further reading and reference.